Hello, I'm Roy Weeks. I'm Dan Jackman. Remember Kentucky and Fly Tires. Tonight I'm going to tie for you a crackleback. Uh, crackleback was invented by a gentleman named Story from the uh, Feathercraft in St. Louis. I think he designed this fly back in the 50s. It's not certainly is something new. The beauty of the crackleback is that it's so versatile. Uh, it can be fished as a dry fly. Uh, it looks kind of like a Griffiths gnat on steroids to begin with. Um, this is the classic sort of tie. Uh, you can fish it on top. Quite often it's fished as a dry fly and as an emerger. At the end of a drift, it gets pulled under and stripped slowly back uh, under the surface. Um, it can be fished as a nymph, and it also can be fished as a streamer. And that's how I used it the first time, was fishing as a streamer behind a bigger streamer. It's fished slow and deep uh, with a sink tip line or a or sink shooting head or whatever. Um, it's a really versatile fly. Uh, the one on this side I'm going to, has a bead head. Uh, of course, you can't use that one as a, as a dry fly. Uh, this one's used more as a nymph with the, with the bead head. I've never actually fished it with the bead head. I've just, I know that they tie it that way. I just suck it so you can see it. This is the classic tie. This is basically about the way Mr. Story tied its very beginning. Um, it's tied on a dry fly hook. This is a standard dry fly hook. This is a TMC 100, uh, time on uh, must add hooks and every other just standard um, dry fly. This one's a kind of a light, uh, lightweight hook. It's a down eye, uh, time from size 10s to maybe 16s and 18s. Uh, tonight we're tying it on a size 12 so you can see it more easily. Uh, I've got one in the vise here. I've turned the barb down already. We tie it with six aught thread. It's also tied in, in a number of different colors. Although the majority of them that you see will look about like this. Some sort of a yellow or a light gold body. Uh, it's got peacock hurl in it and with a brown hackle. You also see them tied some with a um, grizzly hackle. Uh, I've never actually fished it that way. I've tied some that way. Uh, the majority of the ones you see are like this. Now they also, Mr. Story ties them in like five different colors. He makes a black one and a solid brown one, um, one of the green body. Um, so, you know, it, it, it made to match whatever you're trying to match the fly. Uh, many people just use this fly because it is so versatile. Um, you can fish it just in, you know, a box of these, different sizes, different colors, and you can go fishing. Um, we tie flies, we don't do it that way. You know, we carry lots of flies, but you know, this is one of them. This, it's a good fly, and I have caught fish on this one. We're tying it with six aught thread. This is a gold thread. Start behind the eye. I'm going to lay down a base of thread. Go all the way over back to where the barb would have been. And you're going to tie in the hackle. The way Mr. Story did this originally, and a lot of people still do it exactly this way, um, and I'm not sure you can see this. Um, this is a, a, a brown, this is just called brown, isn't it? Brown coachman. Brown coachman um, hackle. Um, it's been cut off, it's a size 12. And you can see I've, I've stripped the fibers back on the end. Um, if you tie the end like this, there will not be a tail on this fly. And that's the way um, they've tied it. He, used, he always tied it from the beginning. Uh, person that told me how to tie it actually likes to tie it with a tail. And the only thing involved in, in the tail is just the way you put the hackle in. You notice on this hackle, I didn't strip the ends of it. I'm going to tie it in just like this. Um, you're going to, of course, we've got the, there's a dull side and a shiny side. We're going to tie it with a dull side up. The dull side is invariably going to be the cup side. The feather is going to have a cup feel to it, and you're going to have the cup up. If you notice on these, the signature of the fly is that the hackle leans forward as opposed to leaning straight up or back to what we're used to. I'm going to tie it in on top and just not stripping those first 
few feathers is going to create the tail. It's kind of like magic. I'll show you when we get there. I'm going to take the thread back to the front. Use two peacock hurls. Now I could have tied these in at the back, and I suppose probably some people do. But if you tie it in at the back, this is going to kind of fill the body up a little more. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have a bump at the back. It, it's not that apparent, but I like the, the way it looks. I'll go over again just to get some of the peacock turned down. And the body's pretty level. And then the body is going to be, you can cover the body with anything. You can actually use the thread and just make a yellow body, just back and forth with the thread. Um, we're going to use super fine dubbing today. This one's uh, a pale morning done. That's what this fly is going to match. You can also use this uh, Antra dubbing. It has a little bit more of a sparkle to it if you'd like to try that one. Um, I think, you know, that there's Vivas makes some threads now that have got uh, sparkle in the thread. I think that would probably make a really good looking body on this. The hackle's gonna cover up most of it. Uh, it's just gonna sparkle through. Tonight, we're just gonna do it the standard. And then we're gonna dub it thin. I'm gonna try to dub it thin. I'm not sure that's all that thin. Wind the dubbing up the body so that all the peacock disappears. Keep it fairly level. Did I mention that this wasn't a very hard fly? Bear with me, we're getting there. Almost. Our body fairly level. I'm going to pick up my two peacocks and twist them just a tiny bit. Keep them together. Lay them over the top. I'm going to lean them just a hair in my direction. Because everything's going to want to pull over to the other side of the fly. Tie it down. At this point, I usually tie it off just so I can wind my hackle using the rotary function here. I'm going to pull this up straight. Keep in mind, we want, we've got the dull side facing the front now so that it's cupped in that direction.
I make five turns. I'm just going to finish the head. Of course, sometimes you get a few wayward strands in the front. And you notice it has a little tail because of the way we tied that hackling at the beginning. So if you tie it by that little, by the stub that's been stripped, there won't be a tail. Just whichever way you decide you like it. Good looking fly. There you go, the crackleback. Dry fly, a merger, a nymph, and a streamer. It really works well as a streamer. Drag that slowly down deep in a hole. It just looks buggy. Well, thank you. We'd like to thank you for joining us. We also like to invite you to come out on Thursday, the second Thursday of the month, and join us at Orvis Paddocks for our fly tying sessions with Kentucky and Fly Tires. We provide all the materials, advices, tools that you'll need. We'll teach you a new fly or help you improve on one. Uh, we would like to see you out there. We begin at 6.30 in the evening, or 6 o'clock, excuse o'clock. me, in the evening. Uh, if you got any questions you would like to answer, just uh, email us at KentuckyAndAppliedTires at gmail.com. Thank you.